coronavirus has upended a lot of our lives. But understanding the biochemistry of the coronavirus can help us get out of the pandemic, especially understanding the protein, the spike protein, which is the protein that sticks off of the viral membrane um, and it latches on to uh, receptors on our cells called ACE2. Um, and then it gets cleaved by this protease or these protein scissors. Then it go undergoes this dramatic shape change that helps fuse the viral membrane with the cell membrane so the virus can dump its contents in and make the cells make more. Um, and so today in part two of my talk about the spike protein, I want to tell you about um, the polybasic cleavage site, aka the furin cleavage site. Um, the um, glycosylation, so like sugar chains that can um, stick off of the protein and um, ACE2 binding and antibody binding. So let's take a look. Saying this evening yesterday's talk, I had told you that the spike protein has these two subunits. Um, the top um, part like ahead of the broccoli is the S1. The stock is your S2. The protease cleavage cuts off the S1 subunit, which allows for the conformational change or the shape change, it exposes the hydrophobic, so a water um, avoiding region, called the fusion peptide, then shoots up into the membrane and pulls it back in to fuse the um, membranes together. So the cleavage that needs to happen for the S1 to come off is um, this cleavage at this S2 prime site, so like right before the fusion peptide. Um, but there's also this other site, um, this S1, S2 site. So it's called the polybasic um, site because basically, well, that, okay, that wasn't supposed to be a pun. I know I make puns, but that one wasn't supposed to be a pun. But a basic, so basic in terms of not acidic, so like the opposite of acidic. So something acidic um, is going to donate a proton. So it's going to um, like give up an H+. Plus. Something basic is going to take an H+. Plus. When it takes an H+, plus, it becomes positively charged. So that's why basic things are often positively charged. And so there's these amino acids, so protein letters that can do this. Um, and so in this polybasic cleavage site, so you have this R, R, A, R. So R is arginine. It's one of these basic amino acids. And the reason, so that's why we call it a multi-basic cleavage site. And the reason we call it a furin cleavage site is because there's this protease, so a pair of protein scissors, that likes to cut at these sites with lots of these multi this these basic residues. And so it can cut there. And so there was this big hoo-ha because the original SARS coronavirus doesn't have that site. This one does. Other coronaviruses also do have this one. Um, it's not proof that it's engineered or anything like that, especially because it's uh, like not an ideal furin cleavage site anyway. Um, so if someone was going to like engineer it, they would make a better one. Um, so nothing like that. Um, but that's what you'll see with like that S1, S2 thing. Um, what else? So yes, so if you have it, um, that S1, S2, what can actually happen is that it can get cleaved while the protein's being made. So like during the processing step, like inside the cell before it even gets onto the surface. And so that can make it easier to cleave that second site. Um, but remember, it can also make the protein like less stable and stuff. So it's not like a slam dunk win. Um, so that can make it easy. And then when you have like surface, you can have the early fusion at the surface. So that in that case, you have like um, a surface protease called Tempris 2 that can cleave it at the surface. Um, if not, you can have um, another protease called Kepthepsin and um, cleave it inside. And so what we're talking about here, remember, is the cleavage at the S2 site, which is right before the fusion peptide. So that's the one you actually need to cut off the head of the broccoli. Um, and so that what happens there is that you have this binding at the surface, it gets pulled in um, and enclosed in kind of like an intracellular quarantine called an endosome. So it's like this little pouch inside of the cell. Once it's in that pouch, that protease cathepsin can cleave it. Um, and then that allows the, the protein to undergo this fusion process. Um, so there are different ways that that can happen. Um, and so, yeah, so here's just another view of the spike protein um, the S1, S2, and where the cut sites are. You'll also see that there's a lot of like little like weird things sticking off of the protein. Those are glycans. So those are like sugar chains. So sometimes you might hear spike called a glycoprotein. That's a protein that has sugar chains attached to it. Um, so 
so sugar chains we also we often think of sugar as like food and that sort of thing but um and like complex carbs but car but sugar chains can actually be attached to all sorts of things including proteins including the spike protein and so the spike protein the glycol the um the glycans are helpful for the spike protein because it allows it to um kind of like hide from our immune system so basically um your body can make these things called antibodies. Your immune system makes these things called antibodies, which are little proteins that can bind to, um, that can bind to foreign things. And so it's like this random trial and error selection process to find antibodies that happen to match, um, to bind to the, the foreign thing and not to self proteins. Um, and then the, cells that make those antibodies so the B cells that make those antibodies they get selected for and then they start making more and more of that antibody and then they like keep some uh, like keep memory of it in your body so that if you see it again um, you can combat the virus and so these antibodies often bind to the same place as ACE2 and that can prevent the virus from getting into the cell so if they bind to that receptor binding domain um, so remember that was that like that finger on the head of the broccoli. They bind there, then the, the um, coronavirus protein, the, start, blah, 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 the spike protein can't dock onto your cells, um, and then it can't get in. So if you have antibodies that can bind, do that, we call them neutralizing antibodies. And so that's kind of like the goal of vaccines is to induce these neutralizing antibodies, which is why um, it's so important that we have that like um, we can stabilize that prefusion confirmation of the spike like we were talking about yesterday by stabilizing that like elbow part with the prolines because we want it in the prefusion confirmation so our body learns to recognize the prefusion confirmation because that's the confirmation where you have those receptor binding domains available to bind to the um, ACE2 protein. So this is showing the structure of the protein bond to the ACE2 pro um, protein. So the ACE2 is the one on your cells the spike is the one on the virus, and so they need to come together in order for the virus to dock onto your cells. And so neutralizing antibodies often bind to the RBD um, in the same place that ACE2 normally would, and that prevents ACE2 from binding. And um, so a lot of the mutations to the virus that people are worried about are ones that affect that RBD, affects that, um, that location where ACE2 normally binds, because that can, um, or so that ACE2 normally binds because that's also the place or that the mutations that people are worried about are the ones that are where like the neutralizing antibodies bind um, because those are ones that can prevent the um, neutralizing antibodies from binding. So if they prevent the neutralizing antibodies from binding but they don't prevent ACE2 from binding, then you have a bad combination because then the neutralizing antibodies can't block the virus um, from getting in. Um, Okay, I think that was all that I wanted to talk about. Oh, so one more thing. Um, so that's with like active immunity. And so that's either with the vaccine induced or with the, like through infection, you develop these neutralizing antibodies. Um, and the thing with active immunity is that your body is making them yourself. Um, your body learns to make them yourself. Um, so it's kind of like a teach a man to fish thing. There's also the give a man some fish thing. Um, and that's called passive immunity. And so that's where you just give antibodies. Um, so the body, you're not like giving the instructions for making the antibodies and the cells don't know how to make the antibodies. You're just giving them pre-made antibodies. And so that's like the monoclonal, um, the monoclonal antibodies and the cocktails of monoclonal antibodies. So the idea with the cocktails is that you have multiple antibodies um, so that the virus, if it's resistant to one of them, it won't be resistant to both of them. Um, and that way you can, have a better chance of it working. Um, and so monoclonal is just like, it's a single antibody, like lots of copies of the single antibody, but it's all the same antibody. With the polyclonal, like when your body like makes its own antibody response, it's gonna be polyclonal. Like you'll have multiple antibodies um, that all bind the same protein, but in like different places or different, so we call it epitopes. Um, but with the monoclonal, you have like a single one. And that's like, so if we go back to those cells doing that trial and error thing to try to find antibodies that bind, um, basically you have like, it would be a single cell gets selected and makes a bunch of antibodies. Then those antibodies, um, the process is like recreated in a lab. And so you have 
all the same antibody being made, but that's why we call it monoclonal because it's like a clone from that single and original cell that made that one antibody, except here it's like artificially in a lab, but it's the same protein that you would normally make in your body. Um, but in your body, you would make this polyclonal response. So you have lots of different antibodies. There's also things called like T cells responses, which I'm not going to get into because I'm not an immune, immuno, blah, 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 immunologist. I'm a biochemist. Um, and so hopefully I got all of this right. I just wanted to give you a sense of like how to interpret things like this. Um, because I like talking about things like broccoli and elbows and cartwheels and handstands. Um, but I also want you to be able to, um, keep up with the more serious scientific literature and stuff. Um, and so be able to merge the two, which is like the goal of my life kind of. Um, so yeah.